Okay, I think uh, we can start now. It's bang on seven o'clock. Check that the meeting's recording. Good evening and uh, welcome to councillors, ladies and gentlemen, officers, and those that are joining us online this evening. I'd like to especially welcome the three new councillors on the committee and hope that you enjoy your time here alongside the experienced uh, councillors that have been here serving uh, for quite a while and have been re-elected onto this committee. For the benefit of our new members and a reminder that if you wish to talk, uh, please press the red button on your console and the light should come on red here uh, on your microphone and then press it again to finish when you finish too. We'll begin this evening with item one on the agenda. Uh, firstly, apologies. Now I've got apologies for Simon Jones and Councillor Sue Moffitt. Um, and I've got David Grocott subbing for Sue Mo Moffitt, is that correct? And Councillor Sweeney substitute for Councillor Jones. Thank you. Is there any further apologies? Do we have any other? No further apologies. Okay, thank you. Uh, in that case, then we'll progress to item two, the agenda, declarations of interest. Does any member wish to make a declaration of interest on any items of the agenda tonight? I must, as chair, uh, declare an interest in item nine uh, because I'm a, a director on the Aspire board. Um, I shall take no part in the uh, proceedings um, just to make everybody aware of that. Is there any other member that wishes to declare an interest this evening? I look around. I can't see anybody identifying that. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, we can now progress to the next item on the agenda. Item three, minutes of the previous meeting, uh, as printed on page nine of your report pack. Uh, are members content that they are a true and accurate record of our previous activity? I have some nodding of heads and uh, vocal comments. Therefore, I will take that as agreement by sent. In which case, we can now progress on to item four of the agenda, our first substantial item on the list tonight. This is for the application for major development in Chesterton. I believe that we have a a speaker to introduce us. No, is it a presentation, Nick? Yeah, a presentation on this before we go any further. No, over to you, Nick. Thank you, Chair. This full planning application for the erection of 330 uh, new dwellings, including open space, new vehicle access off Apedale Road, and associated infrastructure and earthworks came before the planning committee on the 6th of January. A decision was deferred to allow further time for matters to be resolved, in particular concerns raised by Staffordshire Wildlife Trust. The level of on-site open space provision and discussions regarding the allocation of available financial contributions towards the improvement of off-site public open space and or the country park. Uh, on the screen is a, a site location plan of the, uh, uh, of the application site. Um, I'll uh, bring up a uh, site layout plan in a moment, but I'll also uh, bring up a, uh, a map which uh, shows the, uh, the wider context of, uh, of the area also. So the application site is within the uh, Chesterton area, which is within the uh, what's classed as the urban area. As you can see, there's uh, the, uh, the application site is, uh, is hatched there. Uh, with the yellow line, uh, the orange line around it. 
Um, we've got Rowhurst Industrial Estates towards the uh, the northwest. Uh, Apedale Country Park is located uh, towards the uh, uh, the west southwest. Uh, there is uh, Cheston High School uh, to, towards the northeast, and further afield is Cheston Village Centre and the associated uh, services within that area. So uh, the applications for 330 new dwellings, uh, because of the amount of dwellings that, uh, that are being proposed, um, uh, the site layout plan uh, can, be, can be hard to read, but uh, that shows the, uh, the arrangement. Uh, the application site is within the urban area and represents a sustainable location for housing development by virtue of its close proximity to services, amenities and employment opportunities. Therefore, the principle of residential development is acceptable, as was the case for a previous outline permission for 350 dwellings, which was granted in December 2014. That outline planning permission subsequently lapsed uh, and obviously now uh, a new full planning application has been submitted for, for 330 new dwellings. A section of the site has a history of mineral extraction and restora restoration works are requ required irrespective of the outcome of this planning application. However, the proposed development will provide an appropriate opportunity to carry out these restoration works and the County Council, as the Minerals and Waste Planning Authority, has raised no objections to the proposals subject to a clause in the Section 106 agreement to secure suitable restoration works. As you would expect for a former quarry site, the site slopes down uh, primarily from north, northwest to southeast with a steep gradient change in a central, central location within the site. That area is roughly around here. Therefore, in order to deliver development on the site, a high degree of reprofiling works are required to form development plateaus. This will require a cut and fill exercise, and the development will need to be uh, delivered in phases over a number of years. I'll now show some uh, photographs in a, in a section plan, which will show the uh, or demonstrate the, uh, the topography of the uh, of the land and the and the difficulties with uh, providing a development on the on the land. So this is a, a section plan of, uh, uh, of the site. It's one of three section plans uh, that have been submitted with the application. This section in particular shows the central section of the site that I highlighted a moment ago which is the central uh, area of the uh, of the application site and as you as you can see that uh, there's a there's a significant ground levels difference uh, between this plot here and the plot uh, up here uh, so this plot here would be uh, towards the the the, uh, the northwest uh, and this plot would be more down towards the uh, the south uh, or the northeast and, and the south uh, southwest. Uh, the difference in ground levels, once all the reprofiling works have been carried out, would, would still be uh, approximately uh, 11 to 12 meters, but the distance between those plots is roughly about uh, 41 meters. I'll now show you a, a photograph of the, of the side. So we've got a, a number of photographs that can be displayed tonight, but this one in particular just shows the, uh, the topography of the land as it, uh, as it descends from uh, northeast to, to southwest. Um, the, uh, the actual former quarrying works and the works that uh, the reprofiling and restoration works are, are over here towards the, uh, towards the west. 
but it just gives you a, an example of uh, the topography of the land that the, uh, the site is on. So access to uh, serve the development is via an existing single point of access onto Wakedale Road, with the internal layout of roads and car parking shown on the submitted plans. The Highways Authority, who are in attendance tonight and can take any questions, has raised no objections to the application subject to conditions. In the absence of any evidence that the proposed development would result in a severe impact on highway safety, it is considered that the proposed development accords with the uh, guidance and requirements of the MPPF. In terms of the design of the scheme, it has been demonstrated that, that an acceptable design can be achieved on the site and acceptable living standards for neighbouring properties and future residents can also be uh, achieved. Uh, we've got a, uh, an array of uh, plans that can be displayed for the uh, for the design of the uh, dwellings that are being proposed, and they can be shown uh, uh, as requested. But it, it has been identified that the, a variety of habitats exist on the site, along with a wide range of protected species. It has, it has acknowledged that a number of objections to the application have been received due to the impact and loss of wildlife, protected species and habitats. Staffordshire Wildlife Trust have also made strong objections to the application, in particular significant loss of biodiversity without adequate avoidance, mitigation or compensation. This is the primary reason for the deferral at the 6th of January Planning Committee, and since that time a comprehensive assessment of the biodiversity impact has been undertaken. It is an important factor of in this assessment of the biodiversity impact is that the mineral restoration works will need to be completed irrespective of the ecological impact of the proposed development. It is clear that biodiversity matters on this site are complex and your officers have sought the expert advice of the County Council ecologist. They, are, they raise no objections subject to a set of conditions which seek to ensure appropriate mitigation and a in management of biodiversity and ecological impacts. The application has all be, also been supported by a biodiversity enhancements plan, which proposes a number of enhancements, including an ecology enhancement zone to the northwest of the site, a large area to the southwest, which will include body, water bodies as part of the sustainable urban drainage for the development, and numerous types and size of bat and bird boxes on dwellings and within woodland areas. Approximately 29% of the growth site area will be undeveloped and provides opportunity for, for biodiversity uh, enhancements. I'll now show that uh, biodiversity enhancements plan. The uh, plan doesn't seem to want to load properly. Unfortunately, the plan doesn't want to uh, to load properly. Um, well, there are uh, a number of uh, areas and green open spaces within the site that can be uh, that can demonstrate that biodiversity enhancements can be uh, can be proposed along with mitigation measures. The conditions requested by the county council ecologists seek to protect and enhance biodiversity, and include the prior approval of a construction environment man management plan and a ten-year ecology and landscape mitigation and management plan, which seek a range of habitat provision 
management and surveys, along with additional tree hedge planting and all boundary structures, fences to allow the movement and dispersal of wildlife, notably hedgehogs. A financial contribution of uh, £249,317 towards offsite mitigation is also necessary and appropriate to make the, uh, the development acceptable. And your officers have recently been in discussions with Staffordshire Wildlife Trust about where this contribution could be spent, with a number of local wildlife sites being identified within the locality of the application site. Additional to the to the to the areas set aside for biodiversity enhancements, the application has also demonstrated. Has also demonstrated that acceptable on site open space provision can be provided for future residents and a financial contribution of £140,000 towards off site uh, open space, along with the improvements and enhancements to Apedale Country Park, is also being sought. Therefore, the total level of financial contributions being sought is circa 390, 300, yeah, £390,000. The scheme does not provide any affordable housing provision on the grounds of financial viability. This matter is discussed in detail in section, section 9 of the agenda report. However, it is important to advise members that independent financial advice has been received, and this advice concludes that the scheme is not sufficiently viable to provide any on-site affordable housing. However, the independent advice did suggest that a financial contribution amount of between 100,000 and 200,000 pounds can be provided. Members will note that the total level of financial contributions being sought is, is circa 390,000 pounds, which exceeds the uh, 100 to 200 set out by the independent financial advice. This additional amount has been offered by the applicant in acknowledgement of the biodiversity impacts and your officers have not sought further independent advice. The proposed development of the site for 330 new homes will provide a number of associated economic, social and environmental benefits, while also boosting housing supply and the mix of houses in a sustainable urban area. The scheme is also considered acceptable in terms of its design, open space provision, its impact on landscape, highway safety and trees. Therefore, the development represents a sustainable form of de development and should be supported in accordance with your officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bromley. I believe we've got a, a, a Staffs County Council um, representative here tonight, um, Mr. Simon Evans. Is it your wish to uh, make a speech now or are you going to leave it to later in the debate? Mark Evans, Chair. Beg your pardon. My apologies. I'm at your discretion. I'm happy to let the debate take its course and answer questions as we go on, uh, because obviously I may not cover anything that may come up in a conversation, so I'm, I'm happy to do it either way. Okay, in that case, uh, I think it's better that you respond to questions. Thank you. Okay, I, I believe that we've got uh, two public speakers tonight. Um, I've had a late objector, uh, Mrs. Jessica Meller. I will accept that even though it's late. Um, I have a supporter for the scheme, Mr. Carl Copestake. Um, now, the, con the, the con conventions of the council state that the objector to the application, in this case, Ms. Meller, will have the opportunity to speak for five minutes. So, Mrs. Meller, you will have five minutes to address the committee, and which will be timed by our clock to my far right. Um, and an oral warning will be given after four minutes so that Mrs. Mallard doesn't miss out on any salient points that she may wish to make. This will be the sum contribution that she can make to the council this evening. So please, Mrs. Mallard, please come to the front, please, and give your objection speech, please. I've been advised that she's not here in person, is she online? Is 
If you can hear, can you please identify yourself? Yeah, she has a watch. She's coming into the meeting there. Okay, thank you very much. In that case, I'll pass it over to the supporter of the scheme, Mr. Carl Copestake. Please, Mr. Coastate, when you're ready. Sorry to store you, Mr. Coastate. I'm now being made aware that the objector is here. Virtually. But virtually. So you remain seated. You can stay there. <laughs> Mrs. Meller, I'll give you a further minute to join us online and then I shall carry on. Thank you. Will the guest, guest identifying online, which I think I presume is Mrs. Meller, can you please unmute, please? Okay, confirmation that the guest guest isn't Mrs. Meller. So in that case, we can now proceed. Sorry, Mr. Copestake, for your indulgence. Uh, please go ahead. You have five minutes starting from now. Thank you. Good evening, Chair and members. My name is Carl Copestake. I'm a Chartered Town Planner, a partner at Knights, and agent for this planning application. I'd like to start by introducing the applicant, Gleason Homes. It is important to do so because this is their first development in our borough. They specialize in the provision of entry-level housing aimed at first-time buyers, giving customers at the lower end of the housing market a chance to buy their first home. In fact, over 80% of purchasers of a Gleason home is a first-time buyer. Gleason make their homes affordable on the open market by pricing homes relative to the local area in which they are built based upon the government's national living wage. On this development, Gleason intend to sell new homes with the starting price of 138,000 for a two bed family home. They don't sell to landlords and all market sale contracts include a no rental covenant for a period of five years. Following the pandemic, Gleason are also determined to focus on selling to key workers who've done so much to help this country through an emergency. It is their intention going forward to prioritize these people and they've rolled out several initiatives to achieve this. Their hope is that going forwards, they will continue to sell two thirds of their properties to key workers. So Gleason's target market is local first-time buyers and key workers, and I think that's worth shouting about. 
Gleason also, also tend to take on the more difficult sites, which other house builders tend to shy away from. And in this case, there is significant decontamination and groundwork remodeling leading over to £7 million worth of abnormal costs. On this point, I would inform you that Gleason are a registered considerate con constructor and have done everything that they can to reuse spoil and to reduce traffic movements during the construction phase. You'll also be aware that the site did receive outline planning permission in 2014 for 350 houses. That was a speculative application from the landowner and attempts to secure a developer to prepare a subsequent reserve matters application was unsuccessful. It simply wasn't a viable planning permission and it expired. The site itself lies within the urban area of Newcastle where your planning policies direct new housing to. It lies next to Chesterton High School adjacent to numerous employment sites and close to Chesterton Centre. Off-site footpath improvements are proposed to facilitate better walking links along with new pedestrian and cycle linkages throughout the site. In short, the site will be well plugged into the local area. Gleason proposed to install a ground source heat pump and electric vehicle charging point into every home. They will plant numerous street trees and avoid large areas of fronted car parking. The majority facing material would be traditional brick. Revised plans have been submitted showing four new areas of open space. There will be three areas for play, which are aimed at younger children and one locally equipped area for play. There will be a substantial ecology enhancement zone and extensive areas of public, publicly accessible meadowland, which includes structural planting. Staying with ecology, it's important to point out that even if permission wasn't granted to build the homes on this site, doing nothing is not an option. There is a mineral restoration agreement which would be triggered and which would result in a site being remodeled and partially infilled. Whereas if permission for housing is granted, in addition to a new ecology enhancement zone, Gleason would contribute around £400,000 towards improvements at Apedale Country Park and towards off-site biodiversity enhancements. Prior to submitting the application, Gleason undertook comprehensive pre-application engagement with your officers, the local community and ward councillors. Also, the proposal has been subject to a design review panel and also the strategic planning consultation group. The application now before you takes on board many of those comments. Your office has confirmed that the proposal is technically sound, most notably in respect of highway safety, which following the submission of robust traffic studies and safety audits has resulted in no objections from the highway authority. In conclusion, your office has accepted that this is a suitable site for new housing, as they did back in 2014. You now have the confidence of a full application which is before you, and if members were to grant planning permission this evening, development will commence on site later this year. A very well designed proposal with significant new landscaping throughout is put to you, along with ecology enhancements, four play areas for children, off site footpath improvements to encourage walking, and a substantial Section 106 payment for off site open space and biodiversity improvements. It is a technically sound application, but by a good and conscientious house builder who has done their research and engaged extensively to provide new homes, homes aimed at first time buyers and key workers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Copesey. You may stay there, withdraw. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Now, there's two things uh, before I open this um, up for debate. And um, just to make uh, councillors aware, the two supplementaries, and I hope you all have had sight of those in your uh, amended um, pack. Uh, and bear that in mind when um, thinking about this application so before i open this up to debate is there anything um, officers would like to over at the moment chair thank you thank you very much mr bromley um i'll now open the matter up for debate thank you Councillor Holland. Thank you, Chair. Um, touching on the previous uh, planning consent that was granted here, I understand that the extant permission that was attached to the site has now uh, lapsed, uh, but it was an outline application um, submitted in 2013, approved in 2014 uh, at a time, and I did check. I wasn't on the committee at the time, so it's, uh, I don't remember it when it came first time around. That application was an outline application 
And this authority at the time conceded the principle of development of the site for housing, and also, I think, the access, which was not reserved at the time of that outline application. Am I right in thinking that in the absence of any intervening change in the material facts, it would be improper of us to refuse consent, uh, either on the principle that we object to the, the principle of development or uh, by objecting to that access, which I understand isn't contested by county highways this time around either. Um, and if that's the case, uh, if officers could confirm that, that might help us to, to move along a bit further. So is it, is it right? Am I right in thinking that the principle of developing this site for housing has really already been um, conceded at this point and that arguments uh, on, on the basis that it shouldn't happen at all are arguments that should have taken place in 2014? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Holland. I'll look towards our officers to respond to that. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Well, that uh, our land planning permission has subsequently lapsed, so uh, there's there's no extant planning permission that can be uh, can be implemented. And obviously, we are a few years down the line since that application. Obviously, the uh, national planning policy framework has been uh, has been re revised since that that period. From uh, your officer's point of view, we're, we're, we are still saying that the principle of residential development on the site is still in accordance with uh, up-to-date local planning policy. Likewise, in terms of the uh, the access arrangements, uh, they're they're wholly different to uh, the previous access arrangements. So that so those matters are for for consideration. But again, subject to conditions, your officers are are uh, advising that uh, the applicant has demonstrated that the access arrangements both uh, onto Oakdale Road and within the site are, are acceptable. Thank you, Mr. Bromley. Uh, Councillor Holland, do you wish to come back on that? I suppose the, the follow-up then would be, is it possible for us to have a look at the access then and, and can it be explained to us? What the differences are between the the access that is proposed this time and the access that was proposed last time i understand that they were both single point access for this development off apedale road so if they are different i'd be interested in in knowing a bit more about how they're different um, and while i have the microphone switched on if any of our officers who have a laptop that is capable of showing that biodiversity enhancement plan i think committee would probably want to take a look at it uh, because at the moment it looks as though there isn't a plan, it's a blank sheet. And I, I know that this is a contentious application and, and members of the public would want us to, to scrutinise that. Mr Evans, you wish to comment? Thank you, Chair. Good evening, Councillor Holland. Thank you for your question. From a highway transportation point of view, you're correct. There has a, gone an application previously which we determined at that time to be acceptable under the rules and regulations at that time. The application back in 2013 was a, I've got a obviously a paper copy in front of which I'm trying to explain obviously, but at the moment on the current application, you have a normal T junction, which you can see there. So traffic continues east westerly direction along Oakdale Road. So you would have to stop when you come out of the current development to that give way line, look left, look right, and pull out in whichever direction you're going to go. The previous uh, application back in 2013, I'm going to look at that and try and describe what the plan I've got in front of me. Instead of having a give way line, the Oakdale Road turned directly southbound into the site. So if you wanted to continue down Oakdale, you had to turn right. So there is less highway works at that junction than there was previously approved, as we've got a T-junction, as you can see on the screen at the moment. So the principle was in that location. It's just the design was slightly different. The design that you see on screen as would be reminiscent of all applications of this size, has gone through a highway safety audit, a road safety audit, and has passed that road safety audit, which is why we are recommending approval. If the junction was not safe, we wouldn't be here tonight recommending a conditional approval because we would have gone back and said it's 
again, in terms of national planning policy framework, we have to be sure that they can provide us safe and suitable access. And those are the words within the national planning policy framework. So the main difference is here, Apedale Road continues to be an east-westerly corridor, and you have a giveaway priority junction there to turn. The historic junction turned Apedale Road directly into the development and you had to turn deliberately right off Outdale to continue in a southwesterly direction. Is that helpful? Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Does that answer your question, Councillor Holmes? Have we got any other speakers on this? Sorry. Councillor Fear, then followed by Councillor Williams. Thank you. Are you having I'm trouble as well? Oh. Offered, Mr. Chairman, I think the gremlins are well and truly in the uh, works tonight. Um, this is um, merely, a, merely a comment and observation from, based on, on, on professional concerns. I, we, we all know that this development is quite close to the, the Roman fort that was at Cheston. Now, this is addressed, I note, in, the, in um, I think, Condition 17, Paragraph 1.5, and in page 24 on the supplementary. Um, I'm content with that. What I'm seeking is an assurance from our officers that when the, um, the written um, plan for archaeological intervention is written out, that it's a robust one. And the reason I say that is because um, some years ago now at Holditch, um, a really rather surprising and large Roman structure emerged, which was not expected. Uh, some of those remains are now, in fact, on display in the Apedale Heritage Museum. And if members haven't seen them, I urge them to go and look at them. They're jolly interesting. What I'm concerned about, of course, is that were such remains to emerge on this site, that there will be ample opportunity for them to be investigated and recorded uh, before development took place. So I, I think what's put down in theory looks good to me. But I'm just looking for a reassurance that those terms will be robust. Thank you, Councillor Fear. Councillor Williams, please. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, firstly, this is the first meeting without uh, hard copies, and I can't get the supplementary paperwork up on my um, iPad. That's the first thing, really. And could I ask the first question? How many averages per hectare? on this proposed development. Have you finished, Mr. Williams? Uh, no. Sorry. Oh, you, you, you switch your light off uh, then, please, if you finish. I want to carry on. Oh, can't uh, carry on. That was just a question, yeah. There's one or two issues, really. Uh, I'm concerned with the lack of social housing, and uh, I hear the agent talking about 100 and 20,000 pounds for a property. But there's a lot of people can't afford uh, to get a deposit uh, to buy 120,000 pound property. And there's a need for social housing on that development. And quite clearly, uh, they, they talk about again, we had this on one or two uh, plan applications that uh, they can't afford because the, the internal profit in there. So it's really sad that that's uh, happening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the, the point of getting high, on the highways, uh, we have on the entrance and exit, we've got the telestoses with parking. Uh, what does the highway, as the highways, we must have done, a, 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 must have looked at it. So what's their feeling on the, the parking there? Because the telestoses and there's uh, no back way they can park and they park on the, on the, on the on, uh, Apedale Road. So really that's another question. Uh, I'd like to answer, be answered, please. Uh, and also the waste management, our waste management team have indicated that uh, in the report, they're very difficult to uh, collect the waste, the waste on that site. I'll leave it at that, I'll leave it at that uh, Mr. Chairman, if you allow me to come back later on. And it's about the connect con connectivity of the surrounding area children and shoppers from this estate get easy access to the village of, uh, of Chesterton 
to schools and uh, and shops. And the last one is the uh, insulation of homes because the cost of energy is going up and up. And it's a building control that we need to keep a look on to look at the insulation of these homes. If we've given permission, uh, that's the insulation, specific insulation to help in the energy costs. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Have you got them? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Uh, reserve your right to come back after officers have had a chance to comment on your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, come back on uh, Councillor Fear's uh, uh, comment and uh, his. Uh, condition approval application was received we would uh, obviously seek the comments of the uh, county council uh, archaeologists uh, to make sure that uh, that the information that is received is is robust enough and uh, acceptable um, so that's that's a process that we would uh, we would uh, we would progress and uh, seek to ensure that we we do get uh, that advice from uh, from the county uh, expert in that respect. Um, in terms of uh, Councillor Williams's comments about the housing density, while well, the uh, the application site is uh, circa sixteen hectares, and there are three hundred and thirty new new houses being proposed. So, in terms of the housing density within the site, I think. I think my rough calculation is that that's about 21%, uh, sorry, 21 houses per uh, per hectare, uh, which for an urban area is is, is very low. Uh, I think uh, in, in the urban area, you're looking at a, usually looking at a housing density of uh, between 30 and 40 per hectare. Uh, and I think that uh, just demonstrates the amount of... Uh, open space uh, and green infrastructure that there is throughout the site. Uh, it isn't uh, a wholly developed uh, site to its maximum. There are there are breaks in the uh, in the built form and a, and a housing density of 21% in this location is seen as uh, is seen as very good. Um, my final comment about insulation uh, again, as Councillor Williams said, uh, that is for building regulations. Uh, I do know that building regulations are, are becoming quite stringent. Um, so uh, new homes are, are usually insulated very well compared to compared to older homes. But uh, other than that, uh, reassurance that it will be covered by building regs. Uh, there's there's nothing further to add in that respect. Uh, I'll now turn to the to the highways officer who will uh, who will come back on the uh, the other points raised. Thank you, Mr. Bromley. Um, I'll take the question with regards to waste collection. Um, I saw the comments from the waste collection team in the officer's report. Um, one thing as Highway Authority we always ask for on an internal layout of a new housing estate is something called a sweat path analysis, whereby we ask for a very large refuse vehicle to be, to computer program that all developers use, to track itself around the corners and to turn within the turning heads that are proposed within the development you see behind you. We have asked for an extremely large refuse vehicle, which is over and above what your borough has and what most boroughs in Staffordshire don't have, mainly because it proves a point that a large refuse vehicle can safely get around, safely turn and exit. And it also tries to future-proof the development should your borough in some point in the future decide to have larger refuse vehicles for better capacity purposes, we know our roads can deal with it. Because the last thing as highway authority we want is for a refuse vehicle to be overrunning the curbs and the footway because it damages them and gives us a maintenance issue. So we've technically over-engineered the roads for the sweat paths in the cul-de-sacs, et cetera, with a larger refuse vehicle than you currently use for that very reason. So please be rest assured that I think the comments originally were, were from the waste team. They hadn't done the sweat path analysis. 
that has been done and we are happy and satisfied. Again, we wouldn't be recommending a conditional approval because the last thing we want is a substandard design that will cause us as highway authority a maintenance issue in the future, which again has to be funded by taxpayers. So we're happy with that issue. With regards to the terraced housing on Apedale Road, um, just for members' awareness, I've done a site visit tonight before I came here just to refresh my memory um, because it's been some time since I've been to site. And there were cars parked on Apedale Road at Silas Terrace Houses at quarter to six tonight when I drove past. Now, as Highway Authority, we have assessed many junctions with regards this uh, this site and obviously Oakdale Road itself. Now, there is no means to provide those terrace houses with off-street parking, purely because the, the way it is. They have to park on road. Now, the proposal that we see in front of us tonight for the 330 units, their only exit is out towards the east, past those terrace houses. Now, I've gone there tonight with cars parked and I see a technical term in highway terms, good intervisibility, whereby the road is straight and I can see what's coming from either direction because I went down the hill, I turned around, I came back up the hill and I had to stop because there was a car coming down towards the country park. So I had to stop, put my indicator on and pull out. Now, in terms of this development, we do not see that existing situation as a reason for refusal of the application under national planning policy guidance. It is what it is, unfortunately. Some may see it as a natural traffic calming feature because it slows people down, given the quantum of development that has been proposed down there. There isn't a solution, unfortunately, we can offer. It is what it is, but we have assessed it. And as I say, we do not see in the realms of the reasons we can refuse as a highway authority in MPPF, we have sufficient reason to say that that is a substantial problem and would cause a severe impact on Apedale Road. I'm happy to take further questions, Chair. Thank you for that, Mr Evans. Um, Councillor Williams, does that answer your question? Yes, yeah, thank you. And I should have said it, welcome to the RA's office here. We don't usually get... I was officer at planning, and you know, were well, quite a few issues. Uh, I, I come when I'm asked. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I thought it'd be a good gesture, really, uh, by the developers, is to provide some parking for those hotel housing. That's another side to it. But the, uh, Mr. Chairman, could I ask about the connectivity and what uh, I footpaths onto the nearer to the village rather than people going round an updale road can we show that on the on the map please thank you mr williams my officers are just checking just to remind members that this is a trial run in terms of the uh, paperless council um, if, if you would like to reload your uh, agenda pack, uh, Councillor Williams, if you can do that, you'll find that the new agenda, refreshed agenda, has the supplementaries contained within it. Um, it's just to get yourself into the routine of rechecking before planning committee. And I know it's it's new and we usually have those um, supplementaries printed in advance. Um, but when they come in rather late, um, it's probably advisable that you do refresh your uh, application uh, sorry your agenda uh, pack thank you Yeah, thank you, Chair. So uh, when the uh, planning application originally came in, uh, your officers felt that, and the Highways Authority felt that uh, improvements were required for cycling and uh, walking and uh, subsequently received uh, a number of uh, improvements to the scheme, most uh, notably uh, down at the, uh, the south uh, west corner of the site, as shown on the, on the cursor. That is now a... Uh, a cycle and walking uh, footpath that connects to uh, 
to the neighbouring streets, and then they lead on to the uh, to the wider area, including uh, footpath improvements that were secured as part of the uh, former Luma Road uh, Speedway Stadium application. So that would then allow residents of this uh, new estate, should it receive planning consent, to uh, to uh, cycle and walk uh, and get connected to Luma Road and then the uh, Lamdale Business Park. Um, so uh, the the streets and uh, footpaths within the estate, uh, uh, the highways officer will correct me if I'm wrong, uh, are are shared footpaths and cycling. Uh, to it to encourage that and then uh, also a part of the uh, improvements that we sought we're towards the north of uh, north of the site and there's off-site uh, highway improvements uh, that will would provide a continuous uh, footpath from uh, from this side of Apedale Road to where uh, uh, to further up Apedale Road and then obviously the village centre of uh, uh, Building centre of Chesterton. Uh, we did try to, and the applicant was keen to provide a uh, footpath link direct to the uh, to the school. So, from the application site here, direct to the to the school. But as uh, officers are experienced numerous times recently, uh, unfortunately, the school are reluctant or do not engage to allow that to happen. So, whilst the uh, our best endeavours, best endeavours of the applicant. Uh, we tried to get that to direct link. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it hasn't come to fruition. So uh, we have to rely on uh, on public uh, or uh, highway footpaths to get uh, residents from the site to uh, to the school. But uh, whilst it's uh, an incline up, uh, once you once you get onto the, uh, the the top of Apedale Road, you've got easy and quick access to uh, Chesterton High School. Uh, I'll uh, see if the highways officer wants to make any further comments. Thank you, Mr. Bromley. Um, just what I'd add there is the main spine road that you can see from the north access that runs all the way south to where Mr. Bromley's originally pointed. On the western side of that access road is a three meter wide footway cycleway which is current standard so you will be able to cycle or walk on that western side all the way through the site down to the bottom and obviously we've got an emergency access in that southwest corner that mr bromley pointed out for pedestrians and cyclists but it can also be an emergency access for uh, emergency services fire etc uh, and that so that gives a pedestrian cycle connection to horatius road which gives you access um, onto Brutus, which is one of the closest bus stops on Brutus. Um, a current limited bus service is down there, which again, as, I, as Mr. Romney said, gives you also access further south to employment. In terms of, as a comparison to uh, Councillor Holland's initial question at the very beginning on access arrangements, whilst the access is in the same place, but slightly amended, one difference between this application in 2013 and this application now is we have managed to secure, as Mr. Bromley has pointed out, a brand new footway, full width, two metre wide footway on the south side of Oakdale Road, because we do have missing connections at the moment on the southern side. We do have sufficient highway verge, which is obviously land under our control, hence we can deliver it. We've had negotiations with the developer and this was not secured last time around. Now, our reasoning this time to try and secure this additional feature that wasn't secured last time is because we can't make the head teacher punch a hole in their fence to give us a gate to get into the school. We could, we could put a footway to the gate, but we can't make the head teacher put a gate in, unfortunately. And that's the situation we find ourselves in. So in order to make for example, the journey to school easier for children and parents and to potentially reduce the need to take them by car so they can walk easier. We were concerned that they would have to cross out our road at the moment and mix with some industrial units on the northern side where the footpath dips in and out and there's quite a lot of vehicle crossings. So by providing a brand new two metre continuous wide footway on the southern side of our road, gives them a connection up to Castle Street, which takes them directly to the school. 
and or continues further you know, inwards towards Chesterton into the local centre. So we saw that as a positive gain, which the developer has agreed. It's not a Section 106 contribution that has been discussed at the start. It's a agreement with the Highway Authority uh, to actually do the works. Um, that could be a three-figure sum, which wasn't secured previously. So I see that as a net gain this time around, given that we can't get access into the school. So I see that as a second best achievement and win from the developer who's willing to do that. Um, so on, on the whole, that is the best we could achieve with the circumstances that we had. Um, and that is what we are recommending for approval tonight. Happy to take further questions if there are any. Thank you once again, Mr. Evans. Uh, does that satisfy your questions, uh, Mr. Williams? I think uh, that was a rather in-depth explanation. Thank you. Mr. Uh, thank you. Do we have any other councillors wishing to speak on this item? Okay, you can uh, there was a question that, uh, raised about the biodiversity plan. I believe we've now got that information to show uh, members, if you so wish. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Yep, I've managed to uh, to upload the uh, the biodiversity enhancements plan. Uh, what the uh, plan uh, shows uh, to members is that there's uh, primarily one one main area for ecology uh, improvements and that that's this area here albeit there are areas throughout the site that uh, the green areas that would uh, that would provide enhancements also uh, i i set a few out in the uh, presentation that i provided and it was unfortunate that uh, we didn't have the plans uh, available at that time uh, but i'll just briefly uh, revisit that uh, the area down here again uh, provides a number of biodiversity enhancements, but that is part of the uh, sustainable urban drainage uh, scheme, and that is uh, would be available for the uh, future residents of the uh, uh, of the uh, development if it is approved uh, to have access to that. Whereas this this area um, to the west is 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 the uh, let me just get the right terminology. Yeah, this, this area to the west is the ecological enhancement zone, uh, and that uh, is not designed to be uh, open to the public. That is for uh, those improvements and uh, numerous improvements for protected species in, in general habitat and biodiversity. Uh, there's, a, there's a little key to the, to the side here that you won't, might not be able to read. And that just details the, the array of uh, different bat and bird boxes that uh, are being proposed. Uh, Thank you once again, Mr. Bromley. Okay, I think we've uh, received enough debate on this and no other members wish to speak. So therefore, do we have a proposal for this application? I have a proposal to Councillor Holland. Do we have a seconder for that? Councillor Fear. So we'll now take it to the vote. I beg your pardon, Councillor Holland, you wish to say something? Thank you, Chair. O only to say, yes, I'm comfortable to, to propose uh, the officer's recommendation here uh, in the absence of any reasoned proposal to the contrary. I mean, I'm quite surprised both ward councillors for the ward where the site is are present in the room this evening, but we haven't heard a peep out of any of them. So I, I assume this is uh, an application that can go forward. I'm, I'm happy to propose it on the basis that we've we've experienced uh, a good debate and that I've been satisfied on the answers to questions that I've had. Thank you, Mr. Holland. Um, oh, we've all got to, we've got people wanting to speak now. After I'd already opened, sure, it. it's just to raise an objection that if we are now setting precedent that if a ward councillor is in the room and doesn't speak, that counts as permission for an application to proceed. I think that's a very dangerous precedent to set. 
Point made to Councillor Jones, um, Mr. Holland, can take yourself told off. But I'm happy to, uh, to take your proposal. Um, so we'll take it now to a vote. All those in favour of the proposal, please raise your hands now. And that's unanimously passed. Thank you very much. That brings us now to item five. We should be on page 35 of your new and refreshed agenda pack. This is the application for Dalewood Road. Newcastle under Lyme, Best Way Northern Limited. Um, I'm not aware of any speakers, objectors, or speakers on public speakers, no. Um, so I'll open this up to debate unless officers wish to speak first. In that case, I'll open it up to debate. Oh dear. Nobody wishes to talk on that one? <laughs> okay, then. Uh, well, in that case, then, I'll uh, propose this from the chair. Uh, and I have a seconder from uh, Councillor Holland. All those in favour of this application? And again, that's unanimously passed. Thank you very much. Brings us kindly on to agenda item number six. This is an update uh, on the breach of planning obligation into an association with the erection of 23 houses in the former site, the Silverdale Station and Goodshed Station Road, Silverdale. Uh, I believe um, Mrs. Moulton wishes to speak on this item. Thank you. Hello, yeah. Um, the, unfortunately, we don't have any any update to provide on this particular matter. It is within, um, is being dealt with by the legal team uh, and the matter is hopefully progressing and um, assuming that the decision is made tonight that this is brought back to a meeting, two meetings hence, um, we should hopefully be in a position to give you some some news on this application, uh, on this matter that that point in time. Thank you. Thank you for that, um, Mrs. Moulton. Um, are committee inclined to receive this report? Please raise your hands now or nod your head as accordingly. That's unanimous, thank you. Now then, it brings us to item number eight on our agenda. Uh, and this is the planning committee site visits for the forthcoming year. Oh, I beg your pardon, item seven. This is the appeal by Sophie Thorley against enforcement notice issued on land at Hazley Paddocks, Keel Road, Keel. Do any councillors wish to speak on this item? Councillor Holland. Sorry, it's me again, Chair. Um, a very welcome report, actually. Um, I think that the um, the decision is a sound one. It, it underscores the reasoned decision making that we made here at this committee when we considered that item on enforcement. Uh, I think we are justified. Uh, I think that the the outcome. So there's only a very minor variation in the. Um, in the notice, I understand the pergola is allowed to, to stand, but the associated structures are not, and the concrete plinths uh, on the green belt will, will also have to be removed. Um, and I, it's, it's gratifying to see that our decision making process here was uh, considered uh, wholly reasonable, and it sends a strong message to people who would abuse uh, our uh, town planning rules. Completely agree with you, Councillor Holland. Uh, and this is my understanding that the uh, pergola stays. Um, as I read it, um, is there any other council wishing to speak? Okay. Do we as a committee accept that? 
as written in front of you. I take it from nodding heads that that's consent. Thank you. Brings me on to item number eight. Ahead of myself earlier. This is the to uh, confirm the planning committee site visit dates for 2022-23. Committee will have read this in their report. Our committee happy to receive those dates. Councillor Williams. Yeah, I use this spot to apologise, Mr Chairman. I have found the supplementary reports. They sneaked in behind each application. So I do apologise on that. Thank you. But yeah, accept the side visit dates. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Um, I'll accept your proposal. I'm happy to second that from the Chair. Uh, all those in favour, please raise your hands. And that's unanimous. Thank you very much. That brings me to item nine, um, land off Eckershaw Road loggerheads. As I declared earlier, I shall now remove myself from the chair. This will be ably taken up by my vice chair, Mr. Nicholas Crisp, who will uh, deputise in my absence and continue the planning meeting uh, for this item. Thank you. Right. Would the um, would any of the committee like to make a comment, Councillor Holland? It's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship, no, Councillor Crisp. You. Uh, move the recommendation as printed, Chair. Uh, anyone to second? Uh, Councillor Finn. I'm very happy to second yeah. that, Mr. Chair. Right. Well, I, I think it's passed then. Oh, oh, oh sorry, uh, uh, Councillor Sweeney. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, could, could we take a vote on that? Thank you. Any all those in favour? Yeah. So, okay. I think that's unanimous. So um, I think the the motion is passed. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much. I'm going to re uh, recall Councillor Northcott now. Thank you, Mr. Crisp. That was very quick and succinct. Councillor Williams, would you like to uh, switch your microphone off, please? Thanks. Thank you. Um, item number 10 on the agenda tonight is the report to planning committee from the annual development management performance report for the period of 2021-22. I believe you Elaine is going to talk on this one. Mr. Moulton, over to you. Mrs. Moulton, even. Thank you. Um, hopefully you will agree that overall performance is very good. Uh, the performance that we're reporting within this, this report. I'll, I will briefly reflect upon the targets that we haven't met. Uh, the furthest away from the target was performance on answering pre-application inquiries in time. Uh, but I wish members to note that this is in the context of a year when considerably more planning applications were determined. We did continue to, to give advice at pre-application stage and other authorities uh, have been unable to do so so we continue to offer that service when other authorities haven't uh, and we are still getting positive feedback about the service we offer so uh, our failure to meet that target doesn't appear to be adversely affecting um, development in the, the borough. Uh, the other target we didn't meet is um, the one relating to the percentage of complainants informed within the required time scale of any 
enforcement action that we wish we, the council are taking. Um, our performance is, however, uh, a considerable improvement on that of the previous year, and we are continuing our focus on this area. And this has meant the work that we've been undertaking has meant that at this point in time, the number of open cases is currently at pre-pandemic levels. Uh, our, our number of open cases was was increasing, and we have now brought it back down to pre-pandemic levels. Uh, so, yes, yeah, I've got the the uh, less admirable performance out of the way, but in terms of everything else, um, performance is extremely high. Um, I would argue it's exemplary. We are currently current, uh, comfortably in the top quartile of councils in respect of performance on the speed of determination of application. And this is down to the hard work and dedication of the entire development management team. Um, and I think they have uh, a very worthy team and uh, very hard work and I'm very proud of them. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Moulton. Um, on reflection, um, before I open this up for, um, for debate, um, this is a, it's a really positive uh, report. Uh, I'm pleased that things are going in the right direction. Um, having been the portfolio holder um, for the period that this refers to, um, I'm happily um, pleased with this report to hand over to the new portfolio holder, Mr. Fear, and which I'm sure will continue the good work um, that's been put in by the planning team. And I wish to thank the officers for a really good sterling job and a diligent one in terms of um, the, the speed of major development applications and those of non-major applications. I think um, compared with years ago, this is absolutely brilliant. Um, I've got nothing but praise for the, the, the planning department. So thank you very much. It was very fitting. Uh, and, uh, and I believe you're leaving us after this, uh, this meeting, uh, Mrs. Moulton, um, you'll be uh, sorely missed uh, in terms of the planning uh, application meetings that we've had in the, the, the past and in the future. So um, I wish you all the best in your new venture. Um, I'll now open this up to um, members for comments, if they do so wish. Thank you. Only to reflect on, on what you said, Chair, and to uh, thank you for the work that you did as, as portfolio holder that has fed into this, and to thank all of our officers uh, for what is a very good report. Our reports, our annual reports, were not always this positive, Brilliant. and the fact that there are only a very small number, there are only two uh, targets not met, uh, is a testament to some extremely hard work that we know has gone on behind the scenes uh, by everyone in the planning department at a time of uh, great tumult uh, nationally. Um, and thanks to, to Mrs. Moulton for putting up with questions from the likes of me over a long period of time. Um, the only concern for the future, of course, and I, I'm conscious that I'm sitting next to the, the new portfolio holder um, with responsibility for this area of the council's business, is in that making sure that we continue uh, to improve, that we continue to get these uh, good results and that our targets are met uh, at a time when I know it's very challenging um, to, to hire within town planning departments and, and to get the best people and indeed a full slate of the best people in order to, to run those departments. And that, that for the future is, uh, is going to be the challenge, I think, is, uh, is continuing to, to keep up the good work. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Council and I wholeheartedly agree with your uh, statements in terms of the uh, the future work that needs to be done, and also alongside the uh, local plan that we're we're working towards uh, in the future in 2023. Does anybody else wish to comment on this? Or are we to receive it as printed? If we're receiving it as printed, can I please uh, can you please indicate that now, please, with a show of hands? And that's unanimous. I'm not aware of any uh, urgent business tonight, and I haven't got any urgent business. Any urgent business? I'm not made of any uh, aware of any urgent business. Which brings us for me to close the meeting now. Um, thank you all for your attendance tonight, and for those who contributed, thank you very much. And just leaves me to say, have a very safe evening. And if you're driving home tonight, make sure it's your car. Thank you very much. <laughs>